let's go now to the third alphabet in this formula to overcome fear what is this i think the biggest challenge for all of us in this world is that we are always looking at what others can do better we are always trying to find faults with the other he could have done this this way she could have done this that way the president of india could have done this way the prime minister of great britain could have done it this way the president of the united states of america could have done it this way and so on and so forth this is not about this particular crisis it is in general we are always trying to give solutions to the heads of state to the heads of universities to the heads of army to everybody but you have to realize that that's not the job that has been allotted to us in the current scheme of things we are not the president of america we are not the president of india we are not the prime minister of the united kingdom we are what we are and in that situation what we should be doing best has to be our focus and that is what is the next alphabet in this formula of overcoming fear is a be action oriented let us be action oriented in what we need to do what is our duty what is our responsibility in the current scheme of things there are two people who come to my mind in public life who have been extremely action oriented in situations where things were not in the best of ways they should have been both are connected with the world of politics in india but both are extremely inspiring figures whose life and deeds will continue to inspire several generations for several centuries the first is mahatma gandhi often revered as the father of the nation and the second is president apj abdul kalam who was the president of india from 2002 to 2007 i was uh, blessed to <clears throat> by swami uh, to perform uh, the convocation drama when he had come in 2002 as the chief guest and in 2006 when i did come uh, when i when i was blessed to receive the a uh, uh, gold medal for masters in philosophy program uh, in the international sports stadium which president kalam inaugurated he was a chief guest that year as well he was still the president of india uh, swami uh, awarded me the gold medal and then he introduced me to dr kalam uh, there in the uh, during the convocation procedure uh, during the convocation session and at the end after everything was over and uh, swami left and the president was leaving some of us had an opportunity to ask him what uh, uh, something so we were standing there and i still remember it was just a few of us and the president and he was just walking by with the security and he said ask me ask me do you have any question do you have any question one of the students said uh, sir president sir uh, you have achieved so much in your life how come you are so humble so i still remember dr kalam said i am like this that is my nature i believe in action that is the true secret to success for a spiritual person that we should be action oriented mahatma gandhi was the leader of indian political system in the midst of the british rule and with all the adverse situations that the indian population was facing in those years he was not only criticizing the british rule but he was a man of action and through the principle of satyagraha swadesha and swadeshi and all of those concepts which were unique to india fighting for freedom without violence through non violent means becoming self sufficient and independent by empowering the rural economy and having every man and woman participate in this freedom struggle in order to revive the great heritage and the respect for the nation uh, which each one of uh, people of that generation had incidentally uh, lots of stories have been shared with me by my grandfather who was himself a freedom fighter and uh, courted arrest and uh, was in the jail for 2 years during the quit india movement as a freedom fighter so these were men of action and if there is anything that we need to do in order to overcome fear we need not worry about what others have to do we need to be focused on what our action should be and i think in our lives there is one individual whom i can say is an action oriented person of totality that is our most beloved in every aspect of his life he came in the most difficult of situations world war 1 was just over the world war 2 was brewing on the global platform india was undergoing tumultuous situations for freedom from the british rule the indian socio economic scenario was in doldrums for the kind of oppression that the colonizers had indulged in 
there were famines there were droughts there were millions who were suffering several hundreds of thousands have died had died due to these uh, adverse situations and at such time swami had started his mission in a very very silent way in one unknown corner of india which was described as 10 minutes past stone age or a stone's throw away from stone age and in the subsequent seven decades while he regretted several situations in the larger geopolitical scenario and even the socio economic scenario of india he did not sit idle at the macro level he provided solutions to what he thought should be the answers to the problems that were staring into the face of india as a country first the lack of values in education and the transformation of education as a from a business to education as the means for transformation and elevation the bal vikas program for kids complementing the school secular education system and the equivalent of that is the sai spiritual education the international program the education in human values program which was adopted by several hundreds of schools in india and globally and the satsai schools now we have a hundred of them with over 50000 students and the satsai institute of higher learning which was considered as an experiment of integrating human values in education at the highest levels and over three decades that experiment in higher education was transformed into a model of how values education can be implemented at the highest levels of university education system mind you that is an experiment not done anywhere else in the known history of the last couple of centuries of the world and that was a vision which great individuals like sri aurobindo sri ramakrishna paramahamsa swami vivekananda dayananda saraswati and several of them had and swami had delivered that in an extremely comprehensive package in an action oriented way leading from the front healthcare healthcare system in india even today is is far better than what it used to be but even today is much below the required levels for the population of 1.3 billion people and more so tertiary level healthcare is limited to people only who can afford but swami did not limit it to that he does not did not regret does not he just did not limit his expression to regretting the kind of challenges that the indian healthcare system is facing but he is implemented a system of healthcare at the primary secondary and tertiary levels through the general hospital the two super speciality hospitals and the mobile medical van program which effectively have benefited in the last 25 years have performed just the general hospital in prashant nilam and the two super speciality the two super speciality hospitals alone have undertaken 500000 surgeries of the high, of the most complex kind absolutely free of cost and the general hospital and the super speciality hospital put together have provided outpatient care to nearly 5 million patients absolutely free of cost if put in market terms this comes to nearly 10 billion dollars in indian context so that is the kind of action oriented swami had to resolve the problems again there is no parallel to the kind of healthcare system that swami has put in place where the tertiary level healthcare is provided absolutely free of cost where a private healthcare institution does not have a cash counter is without a parallel in the whole world and it is sustaining itself now for almost 30 years third drinking water supply swami himself was a victim of that when he was studying at his uh, brother's residence and used to carry those pots of water in order to provide drinking water to the household there were marks on his shoulders because he was carrying those pots of water for several miles back and forth in order to do his duty towards his sister in law and brother who were expecting a child 50 years later swami provided drinking water to the entire district of anantpur with 700 villages and over the next 12 years provided drinking water in three states of india in four districts and one metropolitan city and equivalent to the population of 1.5% of the indian population free of cost projects which have been acknowledged by the government of india the planning commission 
the Asian Development Bank and the World Water Forum at Mexico and Osaka as among the best examples of public-private partnership and the achievement of the Millennium Development Goal. How was all this possible? Action orientation. From morning to night, action, action, action. Do not worry about tomorrow. Do not worry whether your actions will bear the fruits that you are anticipating. Do your work, have the best of intentions and then God will ensure that things will fall into place. It's a different thing that your divinity in human form was executing these projects. But Swami repeatedly said and told the students several times, in executing all of these, I have never used my divine powers. I have always gone the human way to set an example as to what is possible by clear focus and action by an ordinary individual. This is at the macro level. Now at the micro level, let me share three or four experiences of how Swami was so action oriented even in the smallest of things that he was doing within his institute. Example number one, and these examples will be useful to you while you are undertaking activities in the organization. Whether the size spiritual education program, whether your soup kitchens, whether the different festival events that you organize, these will be useful to you to know what Swami expected and what Swami did himself by setting an example of action orientation. Life. So the first example, when the college in Prashantilayam was first started, Tom used to give surprise visits to the classes and he used to come and sit in the last bench. Imagine you're sitting in class, your teacher is teaching, but Swami is sitting behind. So <laughs> inevitably, uh, invariably all the students would turn behind and look at Swami. Tom said, no, 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 focus on what the teacher is saying. And he'll tell the teacher, continue, continue. And imagine the economics teacher has to continue teaching economics when Swami is sitting in the class. But when Swami's command, go ahead, do it. So they, the economics teacher or whichever class English teacher would teach. Swami would be sitting behind and in small sheets of paper, he would be making some notes. At the end of the class, he will would come in front, talk to the students, quietly hand, hand over that piece of paper to the teacher and leave. What was that small sheet of paper and what Swami had written? He had given instructions, feedback to the teacher on what he thought or he or she was doing right or wrong. Your voice is not heard on the last bench. You are not being, you are not giving a opportunity for the weaker students to ask questions. You are moving too fast. The weaker students may not be able to uh, manage with your pace. The handwriting on the blackboard is not very clear. Or for those who it was big, it's okay, it's big and it's clear. This is the way, please continue. Feedback. So that the teaching in this college, which had just commenced, imagine the founder trustee and eventually the founder chancellor of the university is coming and seating, sitting in the class and giving feedback to the teacher so that the teacher can improve and that feedback stays with him for the rest of his life because Swami had given, had given that feedback. Example of action oriented. Event management. Prime Minister Vajpayee was going to was coming to Prashantinilayam as the chief guest for the convocation. And invariably, Swami would be going to uh, see the arrangements made for these VVIP visits. Uh, Prime Minister Vajpayee was uh, going to say in the Sai Shuniva's guest house, Swami went there, saw everything and saw that everything was in order, then came back to Purnachandra residence at that time. And then half an hour later, he sent a message. He said, I now recollect there is no air freshener in the bathroom of the Prime Minister. Please ensure that there is an air freshener installed in the bathroom because that is what the standard should be. Imagine Swami being interested and focused on the air freshener in the bathroom because the Prime Minister is doing that kind of thing. In fact, in the early years, I'm told in 1987 when the first Vice Chancellor's Conference was held in Prashantinilayam, there were several eminent educationists from all parts of India who came to Prashantinilayam to participate in this program. And Swami, this is one of the big pro first big programs held by Prashantin for all the vice chancellors as a university. And Swami had himself identified a group of students and he was training them in hospitality. And he went to the guest house where these vice chancellors were going to stay. Vice chancellor is almost equal to the president of, of a university in the US. So Swami would uh, Swami would go to that particular guest house and he would teach the students as to how the Blanket should be placed, 
how the flush should be checked, whether the water is fine in the tap, the faucet, the flow is fine or not, whether the fan is working properly or not, the light is working in the bathroom properly or not, whether the bed is properly laid or not. Swami himself showed it to this batch of students as to how they should be ensuring that the hospitality provided to these eminent educationists is of a very high order, though they were coming to an apparently a rural location. So that is what action orientation is. We may not be the vice chancellor of the university ourselves. We may be a small student as a part of the team, because but it is as much an opportunity for us to ensure that the prestige of the university or the institution that we are representing is ensured in the action that we are undertaking. Imagine if the flush is not working. Imagine if the waterfall is not uniform. Imagine if the bed is not properly laid when the guest first comes into the room. Whose responsibility is it to ensure? The frontline workers' responsibility is to ensure. So no work is big or small. Swami himself did that to show how it can be done. Talking about no work is big or small. I remember of an experience shared by Professor Balchandran was former head of the department of economics and in those years in 1979 he was a caretaker for the old hostel which is now which is where the Brindavan students now come and stay which is just opposite to the Sai Kulwant hall and all the Prashant Klim students used to stay there in 1979 because Swami had not yet inaugurated the hostel which is the main hostel now which is opposite the international sports stadium next to the music college. So what used to happen is if once a month Swami used to call all these boys to the mandir upstairs and they used to participate in arranging things in cleaning in brooming in removing cobwebs all these were apparent opportunities for them to have an experience of being close to swami and working with him but they were it was kind of a sunday service day kind of a uh, kind of an arrangement so this particular the professor balchandran was standing uh, was looking at this uh, look, looking at the students because the teachers were not there uh, were not supposed to be there so he was looking from here and there he saw one particular student was talking to Swami and uh, the student had a broom in his hand and in the course of the conversation Swami took the broom from the students and himself started brooming the floor and this student was standing and watching Swami broom and Swami broomed for a few for about half a minute or so and then he took the broom from Swami. This teacher was boiling with anger. How dare you give the broom to Swami and stand like an onlooker when Swami is brooming the floor. He was waiting for the students to come back so that he could reprimand his students for lack of discipline. The student came back, he summoned him and said, what happened? He asked him what happened. He was very upset. And he said, then the student explained. He said, sir, I was brooming the floor. I did not, I was not doing it well because I have never broomed earlier. I have no experience in brooming the floor. And uh, Swami was looking at me and he was not happy with the way I was brooming the floor. So he asked me and I told him that Swami, I have never uh, done any kind of brooming earlier. So then Swami took the broom from this boy and for the next half a minute Swami showed him how the brooming should be done. How to use the broom, how to hold it, how to bend, how to collect the dust etc etc. And sir that's why I was standing and watching Swami demonstrating how to do brooming well. That is action oriented. That is the kind of focus that we need to have on the smallest of things because yoga karma su kaushalam. True yoga is excellence in action. True yoga is not about closing our eyes and meditating. Swami used to often joke, nowadays people meditate with a smile as if they are posing for a photograph. That's the kind of meditation we indulge in. True yoga or true meditation is being aware of what we are doing every moment. Be alert, be aware. Swami used to say, B -A -B -A, be alert, be aware. Be alert and be aware of whatever you are doing. Today, this term mindfulness has become very popular. Swami used to you call. Swami used to often tell, tell us about CIA, not the Central Intelligence Agency. CIA, constant integrated awareness. Be aware. Be aware in an integrated fashion in thought, word, and deed, and have this constantly. That is what true meditation is. That is what true yoga is. In whatever action we undertake. We should be able to have this kind of constant awareness. Another example I remember, this was when I was in my first year of MBA. How we can help or rectify the problems that certain government institutions may not be able to accomplish. This was about the schools. 
Some of the government schools in Prashantalayam did not have an appropriate infrastructure. And, if, and as a result, many of the teachers were teaching in under the tree in Puttaparthi. But four or five such small schools were uh, conducting classes under the tree. And uh, in one of the car drives, uh, that saw, the car ride that Swami was going, he came, he saw this and then he asked what happened. And then he was told that some of the school buildings which were supposed to come have not come. And as a result of which the kids are having to study under the tree. Mind you, these were government schools. So then Swami decided that if the government is not able to provide the school infrastructure, he will do that. And he decided to construct primary schools in Tapati, all the four on behalf of the trust. He put together a team of students and teachers, research scholars, senior students and teachers, four of them, who would coordinate with the government authorities and then took a lot of interest and gave detailed instructions on how this particular school building should come up. And I remember one very interesting uh, uh, example, one of the teachers had uh, shared with me, uh, Mr. Rangarajan, Dr. Rangarajan, uh, he just completed his term as the director of the Brindavan campus. He was also there in that team and he told us, about a very interesting conversation they had with Swami in the interview room. Apparently, in the drawing of that particular school, typically what happens in the Indian uh, public, public schools, the bathroom is outside. Uh, common bathroom is on the outer periphery of the compound and uh, not near to the main school building. So, that is how this particular school design was also made. What Swami did was, he said, no, don't have the bathroom here. Shift the bathroom to next to the classroom, just outside the classroom. So then the engineer said, Swami, if the bathroom is just next to the classroom, then it will, the classroom will continue to stink and it will be a very unhealthy environment in which the students will be studying because you know how public bathrooms are maintained. Swami smiled and said, exactly. That is the reason why I want the bathroom to be next to the classroom because if the bathroom is next to the classroom and it stinks, the students and the teachers will collectively ensure that the bathrooms remain clean. Just to uh, in, in, uh, ingrain this habit in good hygiene and sanitation, that I want the bathrooms to be next to the class. So that is the level of micro level involvement that Swami had in all that he did. And that is the action oriented. The smallest of tasks, the smallest, or here is Swami hosting the Prime Minister of India. And uh, the Prime Minister of India bows down to Swami and seeks his blessings for himself and the country. And here is Swami guiding a small primary school construction project in Puttaparthi. And see the kind of involvement he has in both of them. That is what action orientation is all about. If we want to overcome the fear of tomorrow, of the future, of the outcomes, don't worry about the future. Worry about the present and give your best in all the actions that you undertake because that is what the opportunity we have. Uh, I'll share one more story before I move to the last part of the formula. This is in 1973, summer course. Swami had narrated the story of this young man. Uh, it's a, the discourse is still available. I would, uh, by the way, I would encourage you to listen to the discourses of the summer course of 1973. Swami had expounded on Adi Shankaracharya's message, especially the Bhaj Govindam. Incidentally, of all the summer courses of the 1970s, from 1972 to 1979, only in 1975 the summer course was not held because it was the Golden Jubilee year. But among all of the other summer course years, it is only the 1973 summer course discourses big chunk of them are available as audio files the book trust website you must download and listen to them because they are so profound so insightful and swami simplifies the most complex of concepts of advaita and vedanta in such simple language that they just they just dissolve in our understanding and become a very core part of our spiritual uh, perspectives so you may want to definitely uh, give your time now that's a lot of uh, Parts of the US are under, also under a lockdown. So in that, Swami shares a story of this young man. Uh, this young man uh, uh, came to Swami and he said that, he, Swami blessed him with the interview. He said, Swami, uh, my examinations are there. Please bless me. 
that I should do well in the examination. Swami said, uh, study for your examinations. You can't depend on my blessings for clearing the examination. I bless you that you will do well in your exam, but you study well. He says, okay, Swami, he received blessings. He went, he did very well in the examination. He came back and the results were out. He said, Swami, please bless me that I should get a very good job. So Swami said, yes, I bless you, but you should also work hard to ensure that you prepare well for the exam, uh, for the job and that you uh, live up to the standards required in the admission entrance process. So Swami said, you will do well and he blessed him and he went. A year later, that boy came back, he had got a job. He had apparently liked a girl uh, who was a typist in that office and uh, he wanted to get married to that girl. So he got, he came to Swami and said, Swami, uh, I have identified a girl for myself and I want to get married. Uh, Swami said, uh, your parents are happy with the alliance. Please go ahead. Get married. My blessings. I said, no, Swami, my parents are not happy. And uh, if they don't permit me, I will commit suicide. But if I get married, I'll get married only to this girl. He said, no, no, Kanna, you should not talk like that. This human life is very precious. Convince your parents. Talk to them with love. Try and tell them your perspective. I'm sure they will understand. I bless you with the blessings of the parents. You can get married. So he... When somehow his parents, listen, he told them that Swami has blessed me. Parents agreed. He got married. Came back next year. He said, Swami, uh, please bless me that I should have children. Swami said, yes, sir, I bless you. You should have children. Then he said, Swami, please bless me that I should have promotion also. He said, yes, Swami. Uh, Swami said, yes, yes. You work hard. You put in your best. You will get your promotion. So he went back. Then Swami said in the discourse that man never came for four or five years. It so happened that in those four or five years, he not only got promotion in office, but he got a lot of promotion at home. Instead of one kid, he had five kids and the wife had to, as a result, take uh, leave the job and come and stay home full time to take care of the kids. And uh, she was not able to com uh, contribute to the earnings. The kids were making his life difficult at home. Imagine having five kids in say, five, six years. And he was totally fed up of this particular situation. And he was fed up of the girl. He was fed up of the family. He was fed up of everything. So he came to Swami and he said, see Swami, he came to Swami and then Swami again blessed him with an interview because he saw him after five, six years and he, the interview said, Swami, what have you done to me? Because of all that has happened to me, my life has become a mess. The snake of the samsara has bit me. Please relieve me from this. I want to give up home, hearth, wife, children, job, everything and come and stay in your ashram and work with you. Because I am not able to manage all. So, in the, so, Swami laughed at the end of this particular narration and said, See, how we ascribe our desires to God's blessings. The man asked for the passing of the exam, for the job, for marriage, for promotion, for kids. And then after everything happened, his way, he blames God that it is because of God that he is undergoing this situation. And now he wants to give up all his responsibilities. and." Settle down in the ashram. So, we need to reflect on whatever we are doing because that is very important. Whatever we do today will give reaction. I remember an experience from my own life. Uh, I had written to Swami, I may have shared this earlier. Swami always used to call me by several synonyms Bombay boy, fair boy, the boy who spoke yesterday. If nothing, he will call me Shah. That's my last name. So one particular uh, birthday, I wrote to Swami, Swami, you call me by all these synonyms. You never call me by my name Shashank. So, please call me by my name Shashank. It was my birthday, so I gave it to Swami. And in the Darshan lines, not in some special opportunity. And Swami took that letter along with hundreds of other letters and went. Almost uh, 10 days later, uh, in the Bhajan Hall, Swami called me because he was uh, interacting with me. He wanted to ask me certain things on my PhD. So I went near Swami and then Swami said, uh, Swami was telling the people around, you know this Shashank, he's got 5 out of 5. You know this Shashank, he's done, uh, he's doing his PhD. You know this Shashank, he's a gold medalist. You know this Shashank, he's a great speaker. Well, you know this Shashank, you know this Shashank, Shashank, Shashank. I was wondering for the last 5 years, Swami has never uttered my name more than a, one or two times in some context. In this five uh, minutes, Swami has uttered my name five times. What is the reason for that? 
after that conversation was over to even today that shashank shashank rings in my ears when i came back and sat in my 10th row 15th row place in the bhajan hall and bhajans commenced struck me like a lightning that i had only asked swami that please call me by my name i had asked and i had forgotten about it but in the hundreds and thousands of letters that swami took in those 10 days he remembered one of the prayers of one of his students and fulfilled it while the person who had made the prayer had forgotten so we make dozens of prayers by the day but we forget the kind of prayers that we made and do not even worry about what kind of reaction those prayers will be giving to us in the long term whether they are in our spiritual interest whether they are in our uh, uh, transformational interest in whatever interest they are they so or not that is what we need to do so that we don't fall in this trap of becoming fearful and that's the next alphabet which will help us to avoid that that alphabet is 